What's a good graphics card for rendering in Daz Studio or Poser? Short version, any 20 or 30 series games card by NVIDIA. The higher the better, but don't buy now unless you have lots of spare cash or your need is greater than your reluctance to get savaged by market forces that will have you paying way over the top. Long version. Rendering is a task that can take hours or even days, so anything that can speed it up is invaluable. Somebody recently dismissed a card that provided a 10% performance boost, suggesting that the difference was negligible. If you were playing games, the 10% performance increase will probably not improve the resolution or frame rate that you can play at, so it's not worth the upgrade. However, if you are rendering scenes at an hour per frame, you save 6 minutes per image. That's a lot of time saved on test images and an enormous saving when you start rendering animations comprising hundreds or thousands of frames. To massively oversimplify, graphics cards, abbreviated to GPUs, graphic processing units, are just large number crunching engines with a speciality in 3D spatial computation. In the early days of computing, the graphics card did not have to handle the computationally intense task of 3D rendering because 3D games did not exist. Therefore they focused primarily on 2D display with multimedia enhancements, particularly video. In those days, the CPU was the primary processing powerhouse of all computers, so it made sense to utilize that for rendering. Then games such as Doom, Quake and others kicked off the 3D revolution where games were no longer flat two-dimensional sprite-based experiences such as Sonic, Mario, Kong, etc. Rather than leaving the CPU to do the increasingly heavy computing, graphics cards appeared that took the task on board, creating plug-in specialization. Poser's older Firefly engine and Daz's older 3D Lite engines are not capable of using your graphics card for rendering, utilizing instead your computer's CPU, Central Processing Unit. Both Firefly and 3D Lite renderers are known as biased ray tracing engines, based upon Pixar's early RenderMan technology, seen in early movies such as the iconic Luxo Junior 3D animated short. This engine is not physically accurate, that's what bias means. Instead, it approximates the real world using tricks to do so. In the never-ending pursuit for realism, Poser and Daz Studio added new rendering engines, Superfly for Poser and iRay for Daz Studio. Both are unbiased engines, and in the right hands, both offer a quantum leap in terms of realism because they attempt to model real-world lighting and materials with scientific accuracy. One area where this is particularly noticeable is with the diffraction caused by transparent materials and fluids, but skin textures also showed a significant step forwards. iRay was created by NVIDIA, the graphics card manufacturer, and it depends exclusively upon the architecture of their cards, using the CUDA cores to render, while also massively accelerating rendering speeds. Poser 11 introduced a custom implementation of Blender's Cycles engine, which it calls Superfly. This engine supports NVIDIA GeForce GTX cards via their proprietary CUDA core architecture. There was a while when newer cards were not supported, fully or at all in some cases, but this has now been addressed and all modern RTX cards now work to provide exceptional acceleration in Poser 12. As you can see, with both programs, AMD GPUs were left out in the cold, contributing literally nothing to render performance, dumping the burden off onto the CPU instead. This has been a massive combination blow because AMD often makes faster, cheaper, better valued cards preferred by canny gamers. Moreover, most people tend to invest their money in the brand that they have loyalty to. It's also easier to increase GPU rather than CPU performance. If you have a powerful multi-core CPU, you can mitigate this somewhat, but even a leading edge 24-core Threadripper CPU does not compete with a less expensive Titan GPU from three generations ago. I will just mention though that Daz Studio will utilize both an Nvidia card and a CPU in tandem, so you could use a lesser RTX card, such as a 3060 or even a 20 series, to achieve better performance. This is something I would like to see from Poser. On the other hand, I have tested Poser with a 24-core 
48 thread AMD Threadripper CPU and it did utilize all 48 threads. In my opinion, if you are buying a card for rendering in Poser and or DAS Studio, whilst having a rig that provides a good gaming experience, you'd be crazy to go with AMD over Poser. It simply boxes you in and closes too many doors. My brief assessment of some of the latest creative software also shows NVIDIA to be far more compatible, although both GPUs are eschewed by certain programs, especially on Mac computers which do often favour AMD. When it comes to NVIDIA, you can use any cards from the 10, 20 or 30 series, and some earlier cards are also compatible, but I don't really recommend them. Your graphics card serves two purposes to aid rendering and to aid pre-render display as you build your scenes. Both Poser and DAS Studio use the OpenGL API which is a software interface that serves as the translator between the software and the graphics card during live display. For this reason any OpenGL compatible GPU will be useful in constructing your scenes. The minimum memory spec for Poser compatibility is 2GB whilst DAS demands just 512MB but both are laughably inadequate compared with the demands of today's high poly models and high resolution textures. GPU memory is used to hold scene elements while they are rendered. The less memory, the more often your software will be swapping in and out of memory, in which case your storage speed becomes a factor. 4 gigabytes of GPU memory should be an absolute minimum, but if you can afford a card with 8 gigabytes or more, so much the better. The current creme de la creme for consumer cards is the RTX 3090, which will cost £1,400 at MSRP, upwards of £1,800 in a store and anything up to £5,000 on eBay. It comes with 24GB of double speed DDR6 memory. AMD offers the 16GB Radeon RX 6900 XT for anything up to £1,000 less but I cannot in good conscience recommend any AMD card to a 3D enthusiast. The performance to price graph for the NVIDIA 30 series is mostly as you would expect, in that you spend more per CUDA core of performance, but it is not a linear progression, with the flagship 3090 costing 50% more per core than the entry level 3060. However, when you take into consideration the amount of extra memory in the higher cards, the price difference becomes more understandable. Bizarrely, the entry level 3060 comes with a hefty 12 gigabytes, giving perhaps the best bang per buck, especially when you consider that the next three cards only have 8 gigabytes. The one card in the series that seems hard to justify is the 3080 Ti, which costs $1200 MSRP compared to the 3090, yet includes less cores and half the memory. For the serious hobbyist, the economic sweet spot seems to be the 3080 with its 10 gigabytes of RAM and 8704 CUDA cores. It has just 20% fewer cores than the 3090 but costs less than half the price. But what about earlier cards? Well, DAS Studio and Poser 11 both use CUDA cores found in all GeForce cards going back as far as 2008. But again, the amount of memory will be an issue especially if you plan to render scenes containing more elements. Realistically, it makes no sense to consider any card earlier than 2014's GTX 980 or 980M, the mobile version, with its 4 gigs of memory. Poser 12 also supports optics architecture for a massive speed boost. Optics can be found on 20 series RTX cards as well as the 30 series I've already discussed. These cards are also currently overpriced, even in the second-hand market. Prices for all cards have been massively inflated by Covid labour shortages, the destruction of the Renesas chip factory in China, and the popularity of cards among crypto miners who also use the cards and are willing to pay higher prices. Crypto mining has just been banned in China, and Linus at Linus Tech Tips suggests that this will bring about a long-awaited price drop the end of labour shortages and the construction of three new chip factories in Arizona all promise to normalise prices, eventually. And when that happens, the second-hand market will likely crash and new cards will come back online. However, when that will be is anyone's guess. 
We were told the start of this year and that never happened, but if you are patient, you'll get a much better deal. What about buying second hand? I'm not a fan of buying second hand CPUs or graphics cards, but Linus Sebastian positively recommends doing so. For me, buying hardware that could have been seriously overclocked and could already be damaged outweighs the price savings. But only you can decide upon your level of comfort taking that risk, taking into account any guarantees provided by your marketplace. I would be remiss if I didn't mention NVIDIA's Quadro series. These are cards aimed at professionals in the fields of CAD, design, 3D and more. In my opinion, they are overpriced, as most products targeted at professional users seem to be. The flagship product is the RTX A6000, retailing for over £4,500. It has a hefty 48 gigs of memory, standard GDDR6 compared to the 3090's double data rate GDDR6X, and the same 384-bit memory interface, with a similar number of CUDA cores. 10,752 for the Quadro compared to 10,496 for the 3090. There are a number of other differences, such as the Quadro's support for both OpenGL and OpenCL, ensuring that it will theoretically work with all professional software. However, unless you need that compatibility, or are running four monitors and need the rock solid reliability of certified drivers, or use 3D software that will simply not run on consumer cards, I would not recommend NVIDIA's Pro Cards unless the expense can be turned into a tax write-off. So which card should you buy? AMD gamers may be desperate to stick with the brand due to the lower price and higher performance, but the sad fact is parts of the 3D industry has shut AMD cards out, and it would be unwise to buy an AMD card unless you render so rarely that performance is not an issue and you can afford to render with your CPU instead. That said, if you use additional creative programs, you should check API compatibility before making a final decision. I cannot be held responsible for GPU incompatibilities. NVIDIA's Optics provides real-time ray tracing for games, albeit a limited version of it. I am hopeful that this may also be leveraged in future versions of Studio or Poser, providing far more accurate real-time previews and animation tests. With support for both CUDA and Optics, in Poser you have two rock-solid, scalable APIs that will serve you well. The 20 and 30 series Optics cards provide such a massive performance boost that unless you are on a very tight budget, you'd be crazy not to go with one of them. DAS has also declined to add AMD support due to its use of the NVIDIA developed iRay renderer. With this in mind, there really is only one manufacturer to consider if DAS or Poser are your programs of choice. Before I close, I will just mention the unbiased render engine called Reality, which can be used with both Poser and DAS Studio. There's a separate version for each platform priced at about $50. The program feels dated, but it is hardware agnostic, which means that it will work with both NVIDIA and AMD cards. Moreover, it will also utilise your CPU at the same time, so you really do maximise your processing resources. The renders I've seen from it look outstanding. When I last looked at reality, it was very slow, but you may wish to give it a look if you are already a DAS AMD user. Returning then to NVIDIA, there's a clear, if non-linear, correlation between price and performance, with diminishing returns the more you spend, and you can compare performance metrics on Tom's hardware. Personally, when I can buy a 3090 without having to get a second mortgage, I'll be first in the queue. So the question for you is, how much do you value render speed?